and chosen your staff? Well, I, there were a lot of keys, I think, um, you know, right off the top. If I could find guys that, that I knew, um, whether it was for a year or five, ten years, that was important to me um, because that just meant that they, they understood what I'm about. Um, they understood kind of my style, my personality, and there's already that built-in trust. So I think when I, when I started going into this whole um, staff situation, that, that was going to be big on my list was trying to find guys that, you know, I had a, a previous relationship with. Uh, that was important. And then obviously the trust factor, being able to find guys that I know operate and do things the right way, um, that uh, can teach the game um, the right way, have high basketball IQ and feel. And obviously, you know, can recruit, can coach on the floor. All that stuff was important. Um, but the type of people that we're around on a daily basis and that my players are around was really important to me. Thanks, Ben. No problem. Thank you, Charles. Thanks, Coach. Let's go to Andy Greeter. Andy. Hey, Ben. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Um, with uh, all the roster turnover that you guys have had, um, two guys we haven't heard much about are Booth and, and Brandon. Are you intending for those guys to come back and – and then if you can speak about the two uh, signees that you have, are you expecting both those guys to join? What can you share about those four? Uh, we're, yeah, we're, I, 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 hold on, I, Coach. I, Coach, I don't, I don't believe we're allowed to speak about any specifics. Uh, or are you talking? Yeah, I'll just speak in general. Yeah. Sorry, I, we, sir. Yeah, I don't think apologize. we have their, uh, anything signed yet, so I can't get into, like, specifics of those guys. Um, but, you know, I will say with, with both Booth and Brandon, I mean, they've been awesome. Um, you know, I think – uh, both those guys would be, you know, great pieces of the team. Um, would love to have them stay. Um, you know, I think Brandon um, is just in a situation where you just got to figure out kind of, kind of what he wants to do. But you know, Brandon's been awesome from day one, um, and the same thing with Booth. So, really excited about those guys' future if they if they choose to stay on. Um, would love to have them. I know they're they're big pieces of of, of our program and, and good guys that uh, have proven that to have success uh, on the court and, and have done it the right way. So. Uh, from here moving forward, you know, I'll just continue to, to talk with those guys and, and develop the relationship and, and hopefully that, that it works out. Um, and then the guys that we have signed, I can't speak into specifics, but, you know, I, I just really like the pieces that we're, that we're having in place and that, that the foundation that we're starting to, to lay right now is exciting. Um, I think all, all our guys are, are basketball junkies, and, and that's important to me. Yeah, I just I just wanted to clarify. I was talking about the guys that were signed in last year's class. Trey oh, Thompson, Kenny Poto. I know you can't talk about the guys that have committed. Yeah, I, yeah. no, Trayton's on board. He's been he's been great. Um, you know, I know he's super excited to uh, to get here as we are with him. You know, I got a chance to watch him a few years back, um, so I know he's got a, he's got a big upside, talented kid. But his energy is infectious. I think he bleeds it. Um, so it'd be good to to get his, uh, his excitement here on campus. And then, um, you know, I think Kenny, uh, I think it's up in the air. You know, I, I think Kenny, Kenny's got a, a couple of things he's got to figure out, kind of decide on his, on his end. So, you know, we'll continue to talk, but I think that one's probably a little more up in the air. All right, thanks, Ben. No problem. Andy, Andy thanks for the clarification. I always err on the side of caution. So sorry for, sorry for uh, uh, doing that there. Uh, Marcus Fuller, Star Tribune, go ahead. Ben, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. You? All right, good. You know, I, I wanted to obviously stick to basketball, but some of the things that have been going on, um, you know, in, in our in our city here, um, and I know when you were assistant coach, um, I believe the Philando Castile, um, you know, incident happened. And, you know, have you had a chance to talk to your players about uh, the Brooklyn Center uh, incident and, you know, moving mm -hmm. forward as an African-American coach, when you're dealing with players um, that are around that age um, that are going to be having uh, situations where they, you know, will eventually, um, you know, be, be uh, you know, in a situation where they'll have to make a decision uh, one way or the other, you know, when they're around a police officer, can you talk about that situ uh, situation in Brooklyn center and how you address that with your team, if you will? Yeah, no, we're actually going to meet today uh, as a team. And so we'll, we'll, we'll definitely go more in depth today with the guys that are here, especially. Um, you know, it's, it's tough because it is something that, you know, as a head coach, um, you know, you think and you worry about. You know, our, our guys are obviously old enough to drive and, and we'll be in cars and we'll be out in the streets and, 
in the city and, and be, you know, normal day to day citizens. So it is something that I think you always have in the back of your mind. You know, have we done enough as a staff to inform our guys on, you know, the realities of what's going on and, and, and kind of steps that they can take? You know, you're not always going to be 100 percent safe, but are there little steps you can take to put yourself in the best position um, so there are no issues, whether that's with, you know, the police, whether that's just with, you know, being a citizen downtown, uh, just going about your day to day business, um, but always trying to inform our guys about kind of what's been going on. Um, and give them information on how to be safe in general. So we'll definitely have that talk, um, but it 100% is in the back of my mind as well as my staff with you know, how to navigate and, and how to have those open discussions and to, to kind of pick their brain and, and to, to see what's on their mind and kind of what anxiety they might have and what their thoughts are when they you know, see it in the news or, or read it in the paper. Um, but I think just it's important to have that open talk and that dialogue and that direct line of communication so that you know everybody is comfortable with, with kind of what we're all facing and we get everything out on the table and we're able to, to talk about it as a team. Let's go to Darren Wolfson. Doogie, go ahead. Ben, good afternoon. How challenging was the assistant coach process slash did anyone tell you no? <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't think anybody told me no. I mean, there, there it's always challenging because you want to you want to do the best you can in terms of put together uh, the the best staff you can, and I know that's we what that's what we've been able to do here. Um, you know, different guys have you know uh, different agendas of what they need to do personally, but you know, I was able to target guys on the first round and actually be able to, to hit on the guys that I wanted. So that that was awesome, and you don't see that all the time. Um, but, you know, putting together staff is, is so important. And it goes back to, you know, what I talked about first, having guys with the similar values as myself, um, having guys that, that want to be here, um, that are teachers, that are mentors, um, and obviously can, can do everything else that, that comes with being an assistant coach with recruiting and, um, you know, being good on the floor. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, you know, we were able to hit home runs with the guys that we have on the board right now uh, because they fit the culture. You know, they fit what we're trying to build here and, and they love it and they're two feet in and they're loyal and they're just big time people. And so that was most important. And so I got lucky that I was able to, to get my, my top first priority guys for sure, uh, which I know doesn't happen. And so just really thankful and appreciative that uh, we have who we have right now uh, because, this, you know, this staff's going to be awesome. Let's go to Daniel House. Hey, Ben, player development is something many people mention when they talk about Jason Kemp. How much did his background in that area impress you? That was big. You know, I've known I've known Jason for, for a long time. Uh, I know the people that he's worked under, so I know kind of how he's been brought up thinking the game and teaching the game. Um, but player development is, is everything, especially for, for us uh, in these beginning stages. You know, we want to we want to be a development program. You know, we want to be individually and, and team get better and better each day. And, and you know, Jason knows how to teach the game. He's one of the best teachers in the country, uh, especially the way that, that we're going to play, uh, really fundamentally based, but has a high basketball IQ. He's not just a, uh, you know, assistant coach that, that can't coach on the floor. I mean, he can really, really teach the game and, and develop guys, develop relationships and get players to buy in um, to his coaching and his philosophy. So that was huge. Uh, and that's why I was so excited to get him uh, because he is that great teacher. Over to Jeff Wald with Fox nine. Hey coach. Good morning. Um, morning. I guess I'll just uh, kind of get right to it. Uh, I mean, obviously the big name on your staff locally, anyways, is coach Thorson. I mean, you played for him in high school. You, you won state championships with him. I mean, I went to his high school camps as a teenager myself. What does it mean to have him on your staff and to have him as kind of the uh, the grinder that he is? Yeah, no, it's great. It's great to get him back. Uh, you know, he's obviously a big, big, big piece of, of what we're going to do here. Uh, was a huge gift for me uh, personally. Um, you know, obviously knows the state. You know, the state knows him. You know, he'll do a, a great job connecting with relationships. He'll do a great job, um, you know, just – being that face that, that we know we all need here, um, you know, to help uh, help our brand, uh, whether that's in-state recruiting, but just kind of help connect the dots with just people in, within the city, within the state. Uh, so that was a huge gift for me, you know, couldn't couldn't be happier guy. Obviously I've known for probably over half my life now. Uh, so he knows me and 
got the utmost trust in him. Um, and I know he's going to do a, a big time job for us here. So, you know, to be able to, to get him done was a big relief. Um, but again, just like Coach Kemp, obviously an unbelievable teacher and developer, um, you know, can do all the things that that are necessary to move the needle um, as a program. So we're definitely, you know, headed in the right direction with our staff. And, and again, it starts with with Dave and, and appreciative of, of him jumping on board. And, you know, I couldn't be couldn't be more excited with that. All right, just a reminder, if you have a question for Coach, send me a message in chat. Uh, if not, I see one more question from Mike Grimm. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Coach. Uh, good to see you. Um, the third assistant, how far are, are you along uh, on that process? And might there also be – there have been a lot of programs now who have, who have hired, I guess, for lack of a better term, the special assistant to the head coach who's not really, you know, on the floor but kind of helps oversee things. Might you look at an opportunity there to add to the entire program? Yeah, we're close on the on the last and final assistant. Um, you know, we, we've uh, we've done a good job kind of narrowing our focus. And again, it'll be another guy that that uh, I have unbelievable trust in that meshes with the two guys that we have here and, and does it at a high level, um, both on and off the floor. Um, as far as other positions, you know, you're always looking. Um, you know, we'll 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 talk as a staff to see if it's something um, that we think we need. Uh, we'll talk with administration on it and. You know, see if it's if it's something that can help that can help us move the needle. I think at the end of the day, that that's what it comes down to is, is you want to make sure you have a, a cohesive staff, uh, one that makes sense, but more importantly, one that is putting our program in the best position to to take steps to a championship level. So whatever that is, we'll explore all avenues and, and we'll be due diligent in our work with that and and do everything we can to provide our student athletes with with the best available staff we can uh, to help us help us uh, get to that championship level. All right, I have two more questions, Coach. We'll go to Darren Wolfson and then Daniel House, and then we'll bring in Coach Thorson. Doogie, ben, go. Have, yeah, Ben, have, have things slowed down after a few weeks here, or is it like seemingly impossible at this point for things to slow down with, what is it, over 1,200 players still in the portal? Yeah, it's probably not going to slow down until you get uh, maybe to our break in the summer when the guys go home in August, maybe a little bit, but then you got, you know, fall recruiting. So, I mean, it's to be expected. I think everybody – across the country is dealing with it. You know, the new head coaches and the first time head coaches probably dealing with it a little bit more. Um, but, you know, I've talked to several guys that, you know, I don't think there's every, any program or very few that feel like, man, we've got it in a stable spot right now. We got to figure it out. I think rosters are forever changing. So you're just kind of living on that portal and trying to find, you know, guys that fit the roster, fit what you need in terms of position, skill, and that type of thing, uh, but it's it's continuous, and, which is fine. Like I said, we you come into this situation, you know, uh, you know, you're just gonna have to grind it out. It's the way it is. But that's 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 what we're about as a program. So um, you know, you just kind of roll with the punches and try to get better each day and, and figure it out. Last question uh, for Coach Johnson, Daniel House, you're up. Ben, with so many guys hitting the portal, how are you parsing things down and identifying potential fits? No, we got to, like I said, our staff has done a great job of, you know, every day we try to at least collaborate and figure out, okay, position of need and what we need and who's available at, at those specific positions. Um, because it doesn't, there's so many names in there, you, you know, you could end up uh, wasting a lot of time if you're just, if you don't have a game plan. So it's really trying to focus in on, you know, position of need, who's available, and then within who's available, who fits what we're trying to do uh, and who fits our style who fits our culture on and off the floor, and then are there any unique ties that we have with guys? Um, so the good and the bad is there are a lot of names, but the good is there's a lot of, lot of opportunity there that you can find pieces to, to, to move the needle and get your program better um, with, the, with the right type of foundation type guys. And, um, you know, we'll just keep bearing through it every day and, and try to see what we can do. Coach Johnson, thank you for your time, sir. No problem. Thank you, guys. If everyone can hang tight, I'll have Coach Thorson in here in a moment. Thank you, Coach. Coach, uh, welcome. Uh, Thank you, Mark. Good to see you. You too. Um, you know, I we we're talking to Ben uh, just now about um, you know adding yourself and Jason. Um, you know, home run hires. Uh, I'm sure you would agree. But you know, your background with Ben goes way back. Um, and just talk about the history with him. And you know, you you, you went back into college coaching after such a long hiatus um you can never probably see this coming right i mean <laughs> no you there's no way you could predict something like this happening uh, i can remember uh you know watching ben frankly as a seventh grader 
um, you know, when I first went to deal with Sal and, and you know, thank goodness that Hal and Katie uh, trusted me enough to, uh, to send him to D. Uh, and it's an incredible relationship that he and I have had, um, you know, going from coach player uh, to friend, one of my closest friends, uh, uh, you know, and just, I'm just so proud of him. Like he's the right guy, the right time for the University of Minnesota. Um, all of the values that he represents, you know, even talking about, you know, the, the, the tough stuff that's going on right now, he, he's the right leader for, for Minnesota at this time. And that was a big reason, uh, you know, why I decided to come here uh, is that I just, I believe so much in, in him as a leader. And I believe so much in what he wants to get done, not only with the program, but, but also in terms of how he's going to lead. So it's, it's just super exciting for me. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, we will go to uh, Mr. Charles Hallman now. Charles, go ahead. Welcome back, Dave. You and I have known each other for years. How are you? Hey, Charles. Hope, do you tell CJ and uh, John L that I say what's up, all right? I will do that, and I'll tell my granddaughter as well. I love it. I love it. I've seen cute pictures. <laughs> now, you have, um, what have, what little things you have learned since you left Minnesota, since you left the Gophers and De La Salle that now made you a better coach? You know, it's, it's being around other good coaches, uh, you know, great staffs at, uh, you know, at Drake and at, at Colorado State. And, you know, let's face it, another Gopher in, in Nico Medved, uh, who's an outstanding coach. And, uh, you know, I think the biggest impact is that I've been a part of, you know, a full rebuild now at CSU, uh, we walked into a, a, a difficult situation and three years later and back-to-back uh, -back 20 win seasons, uh, I think I have a great sense of, of what needs to be done. The second piece of it obviously is that knowing the Minnesota uh, basketball community and knowing how awesome this university is, it's just, it, you know, it's invigorating to talk about. So um, I, I think that's the biggest thing is that just being part of a rebuild in particular, I think I can bring something to the table uh, to help Ben's vision. Great to see you. Hope to talk to you soon. Yeah, great to see you too. Thank you, Charles. Let's go to Darren Wolfson with KSTP. Thor, congratulations. Good to see you. Appreciate Easy it. Easy decision Gary. or a hard decision to come home considering how close you are with Nico? Hard, hard decision. And, and not because I, I so believe in Ben and the vision, uh, but, you know, many of you know me well personally, and I, I'm a loyal guy. And let's face it, CSU is probably going to be a top 25 team next year. Uh, but at the end of the day, Minnesota is home for me. And, um, you know, when I walked on campus when Ben had me here uh, last week before I made my decision, you know, I, there's so many great memories I have of being here before, and, and it's home. Minnesota's home for me. So having that and being with Ben Johnson, you kidding me? Um, you know, I'm, I'm just so excited, so excited to be here. Let's go over to Andy Greeter with the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Andy? Hey, Dave. I don't think we've met before. Nice to meet you. Um, nice to see you, Andy. Yeah, I, uh, I read a quote from you uh, when Ben got the job as an assistant at Xavier saying that you told his dad that someday you'll probably work for Ben. Um, he said that when he was a senior in high school, what gave you that uh, impression, you know, 20 years ago that he would be a head coach someday? Ben's one of his greatest strengths is his poise and his demeanor when adversity strikes. And as a player, you, he was never rattled you know, what, over 2,300 points in his career, three times the state title uh, game, two state championships, seven game winning shots. I could go on and on 39 of his last 40 free throws, but I, I think everybody knows I'm a basketball fanatic that way, but you know, it, it, it's funny. He, he carried himself in a way that I knew, I knew he was special. Um, and, and I'm not sure what motivated at the time. And I had no idea that the stars would align like this. But um, as I said, I just, I have so much respect for him um, as a human being and how he deals with people and how he communicates and how he inspires and how he motivates. And as a leader, you know, he wasn't, a, he, he wasn't a guy that was pounding his chest, that poise um, and, and that, that real role modeling 
you know, even as a high school player was just so strong that those are all things that, you know, through the course of, of seeing him grow. Um, and, and now he's such a, he's such a basketball guy, you know, our, our conversations over the years, um, he, he just has a great understanding of how the game needs to be played. And so again, I, I'm the, the stars aligned with this. It's just, I'm just so thrilled to be here, to be home and to be a uh, part of his, his program and his vision is just, it's unbelievable. Let's go to Daniel House with gophersguru.com. Hey, Dave, welcome back. Basketball has taken you many different places. What do you think makes Minnesota high school basketball special? Well, it, one is that I really think that, uh, and I'm biased because I was a Minnesota high school coach, but I just think the, the coaching in the state and the way to play, every, people do it the right way. And you start to think about the values um, and, and the life lessons that, that kids learn uh, from so many outstanding coaches. And now the last five years, actually, you know, I've, I've been all over the country actually recruiting, and it was a reminder of, of how solid, how outstanding Minnesota prep basketball is. And of course, I can't we'd have to be here for a half hour for me to talk about um, all the coaches that I respect. Uh, but I, I think it starts there. And I think that can lead right into the success of this program. And I've lived it. I've lived it with Minnesota guys on the floor. And that's what's so excited about. I'm so excited about this is that uh, I think we can play right into that, into uh, our program. And Ben understands that he's been a part of it. He's lived it uh, again, right guy, right time. Uh, man, am I fired up to, to, to make this happen. Just a reminder, if you have a question for Coach Thorson, send me a message in chat. Uh, I see Marcus Fuller and then Mike Grimm. So we'll go back to Marcus Fuller at the Pioneer Press. Or, I'm sorry, Star Tribune. Go ahead, Marcus. In a little bit. Uh, I can't tell you're excited at all, by the way, Coach. Um, oh, man, <laughs> you kidding me? Like I walked yeah. in this morning, I walked yeah. by Ben Johnson. What's up, man? I mean, you kidding me? <laughs> Uh, no, no more, no more late night telephone calls. So, well, there probably still will be, but um, man, I, I just the hair stood up on my arms um, when I, when I walked in this morning, because I know what this place can be and we're going to make it happen. Um, the question uh, would be just on recruiting Minnesota kids, you know, um, Ben obviously, and, and uh, you know, Mark Coyle talked quite a bit about that in the introductory press conference. Um, when you were a high school coach, you weren't recruiting Minnesota kids, but you did obviously at Colorado State. Um, what's it going to be like just being the Gophers coach again? I know you, it's been a while. And, co and then recruiting Minnesota kids, you know, with your um, obviously ties to the state as a high school coach. You know, I, I can't talk specifically, obviously, about um, kids, so I want to be careful about that. But um, I'm so fortunate that I've had – a marvelous experience. You know, I talked about high school coaches here before. Um, the number of people that reached out to me was overwhelming, to be honest. Um, and so, you know, being able to walk into a gym um, and people have a sense of who you are and, and what you stand for. And I think what's even better about it is that it's not just me. More importantly, guess what? It's, it's the assistant coach that's lived it, who's played here. Uh, you know, so that, that is what's so cool. I, and I can tell you that I, I love Colorado, uh, but I can walk into a gym in Colorado and nobody knows who I am. And um, so from a recruiting perspective, for example, um, it just, it just makes so much sense in terms of being here because of my, my journey. Um, so, I, I, and I love it. And I, I love, I also love the fact that like, I don't have to, even in Colorado, like I had to Google Gunnison like where's Gunnison okay I I know where Morris is and I know where Moorhead is and I know where Duluth is and I, I've driven and probably scouted to all those towns so you know wherever it might be um you know that that piece of it that familiarity is 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 you know something that really motivated me let's go to the voice of the Gophers Mike Grimm thanks Paul uh coach welcome back good to see you um you thanks Mike do you have an idea yet uh, as you and Ben and Jason talk about kind of what roles you all will fill, whether it's X's and O's, recruiting, uh, scouting, all that stuff, or is it, are we too early yet? You know, um, honestly, we have been so caught up with uh, building this roster and recruiting 
that we probably haven't had as much um, discussion about that. Um, I think it's safe to say though, that I'll probably have something to do with gopher defense uh, and game prep. I think it's safe to, to say that I'll have some role in that, uh, which I'm excited about. Um, I, I know the first thing that I'll do when I get my computer here, I'm dying to get it, is, is to put the sports code editing stuff on it because that's what I do. I watch film. Uh, so, you know, but I think, I think what's great about this situation is that Ben, Ben really targeted um, Jason and I, and, you know, Jason and I have known each other for gosh, almost two decades as well. Um, you know, he recruited some of my guys at De La Salle when he was at North Dakota State. Um, he is a top notch guy. And so I, I'm excited because um, I, I think there's an energy. Um, I think there's a vision that is just momentous in, ter in terms of what we're going to do here at Minnesota. So, um, you know, specifics uh, beyond recruiting right now, it's all about recruiting. But I, I think the summer, you know, and when we can get guys back on campus and, you know, um, can sit down. I think, I think that will sort of fall into place that way. Let's go to Jeff Wald with Fox nine. Hey coach, welcome home. Uh, I'm thank we, you. We haven't spoken in probably 20 years since I was in your high school camps, but, uh, <laughs> it, gotta it, love it. <laughs> anyway, drills or what, what do we do? Huh? Uh, I vaguely remember, be, I vaguely remember being in a free throw shooting contest at the very end. Gotta love it. Free throws are free throws are important. You gotta make them. Yeah, no kidding. Um, your name is obviously big in local circles here. We've talked about recruiting, but it just seems like anybody who's ever been associated with you on a playing level plays their absolute guts out for you. Um, the the energy is never questioned. The defense, and the intensity are never questioned. Why do you think that is? Why do you think you're able to relate to kids on that level where they'll just give it everything they have for you? First off. Um, Kind words, thank you. Second, um, I, in my mind, it's a lot less to do with Dave Thorson and more to do with um, the young men that I've coached over the years that just were selfless and um, were, were, were willing to just, you know, be all in. Uh, ben talked about two feet in, um, and I, I'm so blessed that I've had so many of those young men to coach. Um, and now over the course of time to, you know, see, the, see them develop into whatever it might be, but far beyond basketball, you know, community leaders and, and, you know, people that make a difference in their communities, you know, so I'm, I'm just so proud of that. I, I, I will say this for me, everything leads back to relationships, um, everything. Um, and, and those guys uh, that, that have played for me, I think know how much I care about them as people. Um, and a little bit like what Doogie asked me, I mean, that's, that, that's frankly was, you know, hard for me because I, I love those guys uh, back at, back at Colorado State, for example. I mean, and that's just, that's just who I am. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend time with them and it, except for my Rita and Ella Ray, um, you know, this is what I do. This is what my whole life has been is about those relationships. Uh, and I'm, I'm also so blessed, you know, someone talked to, if someone asked about Minnesota basketball, I would even say, and, and you know, the North Dakotans out there are upset now because, you know, I am a Fargo, North Dakota guy, native. But what I'd say is that, you know, the, the educators that I've met over the course of, of my life had made such a difference in my life. And I, I, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be one of those people um, that, that helped each, help others um, reach their goals. So somewhere all intertwined, I think I, I'm blessed that way that I've had guys just, just played their tails off for us. It'll be no different now. I mean, the great news is that that's what, that's how Ben is. I mean, he's a relational guy, you know, and, and too often in this business, uh, it, there's, there's a transactional. Um, and I think we're seeing less and less transactional coaches. I want to, I want to always be a transformational coach. And I know that Ben is that I, you know, I, I would have come back if I didn't hundred percent believe in that. He's, he's, he's a guy that understands how important is that relationship, which becomes then transformational for those, you know, for those people that we're working with. So I'm blessed. Coach, I see two more questions. We'll go to Doogie and then we'll finish with Daniel House. Doogie, go ahead. Thor, you said, quote, we're going to make it happen. Where, where does that confidence come from? Because I don't need to remind you, Thor, that, that it's been a long time since there's been a consistent winner here. I mean, really, it was when you were here 
as a really young guy working for Clem, that's the last time there's been a consistent winner. So what, what has you so confident that you are going to make it happen here? Start, starts with the basics um, in that, again, a, a program that, you know, frankly starts with that relationship. I might even say love, to be honest, you know, and, and loving what you're doing, loving the players that we have here. Second, I think it's a, an appreciation uh, of what we have um, locally and, and in the state um, because we've got great basketball. And I think what's exciting um, is, is that if you think about it, um, back in the 90s, uh, there weren't as many good players uh, at this level. There were good players, don't get me wrong, but at this level that we could, can, we could recruit, there weren't that many. Um, I think there are more today. Uh, myself, I think that list is longer. Um, and, and so I, I think that helps us and makes me feel confident that we can do it the right way, be relational, um, and, and get, get young men that understand that. And, and I really believe there are a lot in the state that want that, that, that can sing the, sing the rouser. Um, you know, there's a pride with Minnesota that, you know, is another thing I haven't mentioned, but um, this program can represent all of those values and all those neat things that we know are present here in our community in Minnesota. And so I, I'm, I'm confident we can make that happen. Let's finish with Daniel House. Daniel? How unique is it to build a roster this year with all these guys entering the transfer portal? Unique is the, <laughs> is the understatement. Um, you know, and with the portal, uh, the way that it is, it, it really is, a, a, you know, a new thing. Um, at the same time, if we go back to those values and those characteristics that I'm talking about, it doesn't take very long to talk to people um, and understand where they're, they're at um, and to understand that, hey, you know, this is where we're at and we want you to be a part of it. Um, but you got to understand these are the things that are important to us. And so it's clearly unique, um, you know, and sometimes you you're probably going to have to make decisions that I, I do think personally that long-term recruiting is probably better. You know, some of the portal, I think is that, you know, maybe some of that didn't happen. And again, I'm not commenting on Minnesota, but just in general that, you know, you got to do your homework that way. And, and so, um, you know, I, I'm one that, um, you know, you're going to communicate with people and get a read, but you're also going to ask coaches and teachers and, you know, I'm the guy that still asked the custodian too, because the custodian knows a lot about who's sneaking in the gym and how they treat people and things of that sort. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, it gets back to that, in my mind, that relationship piece of it. Um, and right now, obviously, in the position that we're in, I mean, the, the we've got to use the portal. I mean, it's just, it, it just part of it. So, Coach, I lied. We'll, we'll take one more question from Mike Grimm, voice of the Gophers, and then, and then you'll be all set, Coach. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry to keep you one more. Um, Coach, do uh, Doogie mentioned Clem, so I, ha I had a question on that. Uh, how much, if at all, do you stay in touch with, with Coach Haskins, and have you had a chance to touch base with him since you have now returned to a campus? Um, Clem and Yvette, um, I, I, I would say that I talk to him um, once a year. Um, I have not talked to him since I, he did send me a text, but I, uh, and I'm sure Yvette sent it actually. I don't think coach sent it, but, uh, but you know, once or twice a year, I have some friends in, in Bowling Green as well. Um, and so sometimes I'll hear, hear a little bit about them. We were in the NIT with uh, uh, Western Kentucky. And so there were some people that I know that are coach Haskins um, people as well. So, um, you know, he, he's always, he, he changed my life. Um, you know, and, and so I'll, I'll forever, forever be grateful um, for that to him. Um, I think very highly of him. Um, and I know that he wants, he wants Minnesota basketball to be great. All right. Thank you, coach. Uh, we appreciate your time, sir. Thank all of you. Good to see you. Go Gophers. Be, go Gophers indeed. I'll be back with uh, coach Kemp, everyone. Give me about 30 seconds. Okay. Thank you, coach.
All right, everyone, we got Coach Kemp here. Give me about 20 seconds to run to my spot. We'll go ahead and get started. This water street for you, sir. How are we doing, everybody? All right, everyone hear me okay? All right. Let's go to Charles Holman. Charles, go ahead, sir. Good afternoon. Welcome, Coach. What's going on, sir? How are you? Doing fine. My name is Charles Holman from the Minnesota Sports Reporter, which is the oldest black newspaper in Minnesota and one of the oldest in America. Uh, right. Last week, we wrote that in the last eight years, there's been a 3%, daily a 3% increase of black coaches in the college basketball. And, and we know that John, John, uh, Ben is the fourth black coach in the Big Ten. Three years ago, there was zero. So can you speak on just, the, do you see the opportunities getting better for black coaches like you, that you can be elevated, not as just an assistant, but also one day as a head coach? You just think that big plan if you can. Yeah, well, you know, that's a great question. Um, I think uh, obviously with all that's gone on in the past year, um, social awareness uh, is, is, a, is a hot button topic uh, in our country. Um, and Coach Johnson, uh, obviously, being the guy who's worked his way up the ranks is, is more than qualified uh, to do this job. Um, and he represents one of uh, many guys who are getting their first opportunity uh, to, do, uh, to do this as a head coach on a big stage. Um, so I do, I, th I think that um, with, with all that's going on right now in our country, um, him being able to have this opportunity um, is going to uh, open more doors for, for people uh, like me and other coaches that, that maybe previously hadn't had that chance. Um, we talked a lot while I was at William & Mary about John McClendon uh, this year, a coach at North Carolina Central um, that uh, organized a secret game at Duke um, with Duke University and, and showed his team uh, how to go about breaking down barriers. So to see um, the progress made from, from that time to now is, is, is unprecedented. Thank you, Coach. Welcome again. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's go to Andy Greeter with the St. Paul Pioneer Press. Andy. Hey, Coach. Nice to meet you. Um, I wanted to ask you about kind of your work with, with front court players. I know that when you left William and Mary, uh, coach there, kind of praised your work with with Nathan Knight. What can you say just about working with front court players and, and developing Nathan as well? Yeah. Um, so from the time I was an assistant coach for Saul Phillips at North Dakota State, um, all the way through working with Todd Kowalczyk, um, and then with Saul again at Ohio University, I worked with with our guards and our wing players. Um, coach Fisher, obviously Rochester native tasked me with uh, coming in and working with our bigs at, um, at William & Mary. Fortunately, uh, I had a guy sitting there named Nathan Knight um, who had entered his name in the draft and came back. Um, he was as talented a player as I've ever coached. Um, of course, he's uh, in the regular rotation with the Atlanta Hawks right now. Um, but it was, it was good. It was good for me to expand and broaden my, my scope in regards to what I can do on the floor. Um, I had some great people around me, um, to, to get my feet wet on, on coaching bigs. Um, you know, obviously the game is changing, uh, as far as how bigs are coached these days. Um, so we worked a lot on his versatility, his ability to step out and shoot the three, um, and also his ability to play off square ups and drive it at the basket. Um, long story short, um, that process really helped him develop his game get that Exhibit 10 contract and now uh, potentially be on the brink of getting a long-term contract here with the Hawks. Um, we also had a kid named Andy Van Bleet, who was a transfer from Wisconsin, seven foot pick and pop shooter, um, was an all-conference player for us as well at William & Mary. So I was blessed to have some really good guys, uh, but now um, have been able to add that versatility to my, uh, um, you know, my development as a, as a coach. Thank you, coach. Let's go to Marcus Fuller with the Star Tribune, Marcus. Welcome, Jason. Thank you, sir. Yeah. When you, uh, when you look at the way that uh, coaches are using this portal, um, it seems that I know you can't talk specifics about players, but, you know, having players that are grad chancellors that come in, 
uh, that are seniors. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot you're going to be able to teach them too much that they haven't already learned or maybe won't learn. Yeah. Um, what is the dynamic of that, bringing in a guy maybe in for one year? Um, you know, Coach uh, Johnson talked about, Ben talked about maybe Brandon Johnson coming back, possibly another senior. So this team that you're going to be, be inheriting first year might be not totally different in a year, you know, with a lot of seniors. So what's that yeah. dynamic? Well, we have a chance right now um, through that transfer portal to uh, to get older, to get some experience in here right now, um, which is, which would help us significantly in year one. Um, I think the most important thing with that transfer portal is that uh, relationships are what matter in this business. Um, so not going all over the place trying to recruit the best and the brightest, but also but recruit talented kids that you have a previous relationship with. Um, if you look at guys, um, a couple of the guys that are coming in, um, you would see that um, at least somebody on the staff has some, some, some sort of personal tie with that individual. Um, so, so that's where we start with the transfer portal. Um, you know, I, I think we'll have a chance to build a group that can quickly connect. Um, and I think that's going to be the most important thing is just, just being able to get older, but also being able to be connected as a group because there will be a lot of, a lot of new faces here, um, here this year. Let's go to Darren Wolfson with KSTP. Doogie. Jason, good afternoon. Welcome to Minnesota. Just expound on, on your relationship with Ben. How far does it go back? Like, is, is this a scenario you and him have talked about for a long time? Like if he had gotten, let's say the Northern Illinois job or you had gotten a head coaching job, have you guys talked about working together for, for a while? Yeah, well, I would, I would say there's been a mutual respect for a long time. Uh, I, I'm going to date myself and Coach Johnson here, uh, but we've known each other since I was a, a young assistant at North Dakota State, and he was at Texas Pan American. We actually had a, a really good battle down there um, at Texas Pan American against them. Um, I, I won't go into the details of that game, but there were probably a, a, a rowdy 500 fans in the stands. Uh, I remember a guy behind the bench with a sombrero on uh, screaming at, at Coach Miles the entire game. Uh, I you have to ask Coach Miles what the guy was saying. I think it was something like Miles is stinky uh, for the entire, entire game, which was it, was it was fun. But, um, yeah, Coach Johnson I've known for a long time. Um, there's, a, there's definitely a mutual respect there uh, between us. As we both worked our way up the ranks, we've been, uh, we've been fairly close. Um, while he was at Xavier and we were at Ohio University, we'd always bounce ideas off each other in recruiting um, and then X's and O's um, and have just really done a good job of staying, staying connected. So I couldn't be um, more gracious at the opportunity to come here and work for somebody that I trust, uh, but more importantly, somebody who really, really values what, what Gopher Athletics is all about. I think that's going to go a long way. Uh, just a reminder, if you have a question for Coach Kemp, send me a message in chat. We'll go back to Daniel House. Daniel, go ahead. Hey, Jason, nice to meet you. How much potential do you see in this program when you factor in the talent and resources that are available here? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm a Big Ten fan. Um, so I, you know, coming from Wisconsin, I know uh, probably just a little bit about every program in this, in this conference. Um, and I know that um, there's been a ton of growth here at, at the University of Minnesota over the past few years, um, going from, uh, you know, having a, a one stop shop over at the barn to now having uh, Beerman over here as, as our as our day to day operation. Um, we our facilities are our first class and it starts with that. But more importantly, um, I've always known this place to be a, a place that's about people. Um, and there's, there's some terrific people here at, at, at the University of Minnesota, and also with it being the flagship institution uh, in this state, we got a chance to do this thing the right way. And the right way is to uh, be intentional about our relationships with, with coaches uh, and, and recruits in this state, uh, and then to work our way out from there. So um, I see this uh, as a major opportunity uh, to, to really, really do some great things at, at, uh, at Minnesota with our basketball program. Looks like one more question has come in, Coach. We'll go to Marcus Fuller with the Star Tribune. Sir. Sure. Coach, I mean, you, Ben, Dave, you guys have uh, been all part of rebuilds. You know, Dave talked about a rebuild. I mean, you guys will probably have to, you know, six scholarships still left that you have to fill. Uh, how, how tough is it, you know, to, to have to fill an entire roster within this recruiting cycle, you know, the late period? 
And, yeah. you know, when you have that roster, how fortunate will you be to be able to work with those guys, you know, as opposed to last year, right? With the pandemic, uh, there wasn't a lot of in-person interaction, I think, until the fall, you know, pretty yeah. much. Well, typically it is a challenge. And yeah, COVID has definitely presented some, some serious challenges. Fortunately, this year, it, it looks like we're going to be able to have a normal summer um, and to have these guys on campus. Um, you know, you can look at uh, the current state of our roster as, as a concern. Uh, we happen to look at it as an advantage. That advantage being um, we're going to be able to instill and establish our culture and our core values with this group um, to be able to do this thing the way we want to do it. Um, and there's nothing more important than that. Um, you know, there's got to be some building blocks for how you want to look um, later on uh, in, in this era of, of go for basketball. Those those building blocks are set right now. Uh, and so we're going to be able to be able to do this thing our way. Um, you know, it's, it's all going to start with developing a culture um, and a, a set of core values that represents uh, what our program and what this university is all about. It looks like we have one last question now, uh, and then we'll let you go, Coach. It's from Mike Grimm, uh, the voice of the Gophers. Go ahead, Mike Grimm. Sure. Hey, Coach. Welcome to Minnesota. Um, recruiting is is such a lifeblood for for every program. Can you give us a little insight into your style as a recruiter and what your strengths are in, in trying to uh, talk players into becoming Gophers? Yeah, well, uh, as far as my style, um, I call it closing the fence. And it's something that um, – I learned very on from Tim Miles um, and from a couple other people that I work for, Todd Kowalczyk at Toledo, um, and most recently, Dane Fisher. And it's all about relationships, building positive and healthy relationships and communicating with players, families, and key people, uh, and making sure all of those individuals um, know how much you care, um, not only about their student athlete on the court, but also off the court. Um, so that's that's my mentality as as a recruiter is to connect uh, with people and and not uh, not be afraid to fight some battles. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not the type that sees a, an offer list and says, uh, you know, you know, maybe we don't want to bark up that tree. Um, you know, I'm going to say, why not us um, and try to build a relationship that, that is so strong that that kid can't say no. Um, uh, as far as the type of individual um, we'd be looking for. Uh, from my perspective, um, somebody that's a trustworthy individual, um, that's a great communicator, uh, that works extremely hard, uh, plays with a great amount of toughness, and really, really has a, a great amount of focus on the court. Um, those are the individuals that I think are, the, are, are most important because those are the guys that can develop and grow as players over the course of the time they're here. All right. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I want to thank everyone for joining us as well. I'm going to go ahead and end the press conference now. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Paul. Thanks.